So, as you mentioned, uh, this was a call in the Horizon 2020 project. I uh, would like to briefly explain uh, how we have to see this call. It's a uh, so-called innovation action. Innovation action means that at the end, we have to demonstrate something, something which is uh, technically new, which is innovative. In this case, it's a demonstration of innovative and sustainable hydropower solution targeting unexploited small-scale hydropower potential in Central Asia. For us as a coordinator and a proposal writer, it meant uh, that we had to find um, sites where we can uh, build our demonstrators and that we have to find investors who would be willing to invest at least in the construction of the concrete uh, surrounding of these innovative solutions. Uh, so uh, it was not an easy thing to uh, set up these connections, to use the existing connection. And finally, it was also sort of a random process how we got to these two sites, which we uh, will use to show demonstrators uh, of uh, small-scale hydropower, uh, ecological, sustainable, friendly, small-scale hydropower. But nevertheless, uh, it are those two sites. We have to assure that they are really suitable. We have never been there because of the pandemic also. And um, I can assure everybody uh, from all the countries in Central Asia the results of hydro for you are, of course, beyond uh, these two demonstrators. So I guess the whole region will profit from the project. It's our will uh, in order to achieve this. So uh, Central Asia in the call was defined as Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. Uh, it has an area of uh, 4 million uh, kilometer squares and a population of 72 million uh, people. And the climate is uh, semi-arid to arid, despite the high elevation uh, of the mountains. So what is uh, quite interesting that uh, in the region we have an unexploited potential for small hydropower, whereas uh, small hydropower means uh, below 10 megawatt of uh, 34 uh, gigawatt, which are 34 nuclear power plant, according to the UNIDO report in 2019. So why uh, has this um, potential not exploited yet? Uh, there are, of course, certain barriers uh, which we have to address in our uh, 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 proposal or uh, in our project. So could be institutional and regulatory, regulatory barriers. It could be technical barriers. It could be barriers from the market or financial uh, barriers. One thing uh, which is also, uh, of course, the case, there is a lack of information. So as a first step, you will see, we will uh, try to um, uh, find out uh, what potentials are available. We have to gather all the data available in order to be able to do that. Also in the region, small hydropower has uh, so far played a minor role in the national energy uh, production. And uh, the benefits of small hydropower have not uh, fully be considered so far, I would say. And uh, of course, also the technical conditions are quite challenging. Financing mechanisms are uh, also challenging. So you see there are lots of barriers uh, why this potential hasn't been exploited and we want to overcome these barriers with our project. The project hydro for You has uh, 13 partners. Uh, 10 are from EU countries, three from Central Asia. And the aim of the project is to demonstrate an assessment of sustainable, innovative European small-scale hydropower technologies in Central Asia, uh, optimizing the sustainability impact of small hydropower through a more holistic approach by focusing on long-term solution in a climate-sensitive transboundary water, food, energy, climate nexus context. And we will implement a GIS-based decision support system, system to explore unexploited small 
small hydropower potentials. And uh, we will uh, develop also in the context of our project uh, a scalable water accounting system to manage, manage water resources in a sustainable way and to be transparent. And uh, last but not least, we would like to support the competitiveness of sustainable market uptake of European small hydropower technologies in Central Asia and globally. Uh, it was already mentioned, the EU contribution is roughly 9.5 million euros and the total budget of the project is uh, 11.5 million euros. So uh, we are thinking uh, in terms of the project in four levels. First level is uh, analysis of unexploited small hydropower uh, potential in Central Asia as a first step. Then uh, the second step is the implementation of innovative sustainable small hydropower solution in Central Asia. And uh, these are the two demonstration activities which I will uh, show you later. But we also have planning activities which I will explain later. And then uh, very uh, important uh, we will support all the countries in the Central Asian uh, region with a decision support system, which includes also re replication and exploitation of the potential. So uh, replication means uh, we build these demonstrators, but we are looking forward into the future. How can we replicate this solution in other places and sites as well? And of course, quite important dissemination and capacity building, uh, which is the fourth layer uh, of our uh, project approach. So in the first step, I already mentioned, we are gathering data. Data means topology, uh, infrastructure, morphology data, water use data, hydrology, climate data, land use data. We have to gather the data from gauging station in order that we are able to determine the hydropower potential in Central Asia. And you see, we have a maximum possible hydropower potential. Uh, from that, we can derive a technically, economically feasible hydropower potential. And uh, we can reduce this potential by the already existing hydropower stations in the region. But as an additional step, and which is very, very uh, uh, crucial for us, we are looking for sustainable hydropower potential. So it means we are not looking only for technically and economically feasible hydropower side, but also for environmental friendly and economic sustainable sites in the area. And um, this we do uh, in a first step uh, in considering the whole region. Uh, we go then down to the catchment scale and finally to the local scale. And with the tool we will, de we will develop, we can also assess our demonstrators. So Central Asia uh, has two states uh, which are uh, very water rich. It's uh, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan. We have uh, very large rivers uh, and um, uh, of course, uh, in this context, the water is used for energy production, but also for agricultural use, etc. So the nexus linkage uh, is available, water, food, energy, and uh, we want uh, to develop also a water, food, uh, energy accounting system system to um, uh, record uh, what water will be used for what purpose at our demonstrator sites. And uh, the transparency uh, which we enforce uh, is of course uh, quite important. The water is um, a very precious um, resource and it should be transparent how this resource is shared among uh, the states in Central Asia. Now, uh, we are 
also looking into the future, into the climate change uh, options. And uh, what you see here on the right hand side uh, are two prediction of climate change according to two different scenarios. And what we see quite obviously, we looking uh, at um, the um, uh, discharges between 92 and 2001, and we see the curve down here. And we are, if we are looking into the future, uh, into the scenario around 2090 until the uh, next century, then you will see that there is a big uh, change. You see the change here between the green curve and the violet curve. Uh, if you take another um, climate scenario, it is slightly different. Uh, but you see uh, the region is very sensitive to climate change. And at the moment, we do not know which of these two scenarios will happen in the future. There is an analysis on the right hand side. You see um, the uh, uh, four quarters of the year, first quarter, second, third, and fourth quarter. And we see uh, the discharges. Um, we see a dis decrease in discharge um, colored in red and an increase colored in blue. And you already see from the four different catchment that this varies from catchment to catchment. What does it mean for us for small hydropower? Um, if we, like in a classical design, design for the um, situation we have, we would design for a discharge of 300 cubic meters per second, for example, but in the future it would probably be 500. So it means for us, and we will do this radically because we go for sustainable energy uh, solution, we will um, design our small hydropower in a way that it is flexible, that it is adaptable to the climate changes which, we will, which will occur, that is for sure, but from which we don't know at the moment how they will occur, to what extent uh, it will change. So uh, we will um, set up two demonstrator. Uh, this is uh, a picture from a site, a small site here in Bavaria. Uh, it's the so-called hydroshaft power solution. It's the concept uh, which my chair has invented. Uh, it's radically uh, different from any other small hydropower. So we have a shaft sitting in the river. We have a turbine below the water. The concept is uh, very eco-friendly, it's very fish-friendly, and this is proven. It's uh, for a, a low head range of 3 to 10 meters for um, through flow per unit of up to 10 cubic meters per second, and it's suitable for the rivers uh, in Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, and Turkmenistan mainly. We will uh, maintain the fish friendliness and the ecological characteristic. But what we will do in this project, we will drastically reduce uh, cost for construction and time due to prefabrication, modularization, and standardization of this concept. The second concept goes in the same direction. Direction. So uh, we will have a Francis uh, container power solution, um, which is suitable for medium ranges like uh, 25 to 150 meters, discharges which are smaller, up to five cubic meters per second. And it's more suitable for the more mountainous region like Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, or Kyrgyzstan. And we will have a container instead of a powerhouse. We will have one turbine for a wide range of potential, as I explained, for adapting to uh, climate changes. And uh, we will also work uh, with a concept that works with prefabrication, standardization, modularization uh, with this container here. And of course, uh, with this concept, with this price concept, we will also come closer to what is offered uh, currently from Chinese competitors, for example, the technical solution or standard European high quality solution, but we will do a step in price reduction in the prefabrication and modularization. 
So we have planned uh, two demonstration activities in the region. Uh, it's uh, one uh, hydroshock power solution at Badam in Kazakhstan. It's a 500 kilowatt uh, solution. And we have uh, this Francis uh, container solution in Shaki Mardan in Uzbekistan. And the output will be something like uh, two megawatt. We have in a first step uh, to assess uh, the sustainability. And uh, we will, of course, also do several planning activities. So we have um, other sites which we will plan. We will uh, make plans up to a bankable study, feasibility study. And uh, this will be at least the result for all of uh, these sites at the end, uh, despite uh, probably the demonstrator is built somewhere else. And then, as I mentioned before, this replication guideline, which will help together with the uh, potential analysis, uh, with the decision supports tool to find uh, other sites uh, and to find investor interesting in building small hydropower in the region. This is uh, our consortium. Uh, we have uh, 13 members. It's led by uh, my um, university, Technical University of Munich, uh, by my chair. And uh, you see that uh, we have partners uh, for, from Europe and from Central Asia. And uh, this is my team, uh, Markus Reisenbüchler, the scientific coordinator. Henny Abuel-Leffer, the project manager, which you could uh, easily address for any sort of question. He will divert the question to suitable persons. And the uh, demonstration board manager is Bertolin Alapfi, also from TUM. And with this slide, I um, uh, finish here and I open for your questions. Thank you for your attention.